Shalom, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very serious broadcast we're looking at this evening. Calais, France. Police amass in huge numbers. Uh, it, it is something very interesting to see. We were in Calais a few days ago uh, and just recently back there again yet today. And while we were there in Calais, we noticed a very interesting change between just a couple of days before that and as we returned back to Calais. And that is a huge number of law enforcement French police that had come into the area. At two different hotels in that particular little city there, there were large numbers of police, both trucks, motorcycles, vans, cars, everything you could possibly imagine were gathered there in Calais, France. And as you can see in some of the photos here that we have taken ourselves that we wanted to share with you. Now, we did take and dark out the images there of, uh, of the hotel itself on there. We felt that would be a little bit more appropriate for the concern of the police uh, that, are, that are staying there. Now, you have to understand what's been going on in Calais here for the last uh, month or so with the Syrian refugees in this little small town. There's been a lot of tension. In fact, this past weekend, there were protests all across Europe and even in Calais they were canceled but the protesters still showed up both supporters and those against the refugees being in Calais and uh, there was of course scuffles that broke out amongst the protesters with police etc but all kinds of issues have been uh, surrounding the, the the whole thing about the the refugees being in this area in the first place uh, of course, one of the big issues there is that the, the public cannot go to their homes in peace. And the numbers of the refugees are just enormous. Some 6,000 plus refugees have amassed in this area here over the last uh, year or so. And uh, of course, they're just camping on the outside of town. Very bad conditions there. Uh, and also, at the same token, it's rough for the residents, but it's also turning into a humanitarian crisis as well. Uh, recently, the uh, French government went in and began to dismantle the camps of tents and little shanties that have been built into this uh, little swampy-like area there on the outskirts of town there. Uh, and it has just turned into a major a mess. It has caused a lot of unrest. In fact, when we were going there to try to uh, capture some of this ourselves on film and in video of uh, uh, film uh, picture as well, the police would not allow us through there. But the thing is, it is definitely obvious that the police are about to do something, as you can see even in the images that we are showing you here. Uh, just there were scores of vans at this hotel here. These vans, by the way, carry up to about 20 police officers per van. Uh, and just in this one place right here, there's about uh, close to a dozen vans in there uh, for, uh, I guess, riot control, etc. cetera, there. A uh, little front view there from, from that side there as well. But the thing is, it it's definitely shows that the, that the Calais police there, or the French police there in Calais, are definitely preparing for something uh, that is about to take place. We don't know for sure what's going to happen here in the next day or so. Uh, it did not, does not look like today would be the day. It was raining all day today. Uh, in both locations, both hotels, police were inside the hotels there. Uh, they were not outside, but yet all the police vehicles were there, uh, no doubt, waiting for the orders of uh, per perhaps what's already been planned or what is to be uh, what's coming next. Anyway, moving on into other news there, I would like to first share with you a biblical passage I think that is very important that we should consider in, in light of the, uh, the next news that we'll be looking at, and that's from Matthew chapter 24, verses 5 and 6. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Verse 6, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now this is taken from the famous Matthew 24 verse that we, uh, so many of us are familiar with. We read about 
where uh, Yeshua is asked about the things that would come to pass, six things he's asked, that would, that, you know, what would be the sign of his coming, and uh, they ask about six different things, and he begins to answer those. Now, I think that it's interesting, especially in light of the fact that uh, uh, you will hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. We are definitely in that time frame right now, the wars and rumors of wars. There's been many rumors of wars of Russia and the United States going, going at it head to head. Uh, Yeshua says, though, be not troubled at that. But did you notice, though, what he says in the verse before verse 6? For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Claiming to be, when you say Christ, it's not saying that they're saying that they're Jesus, but they're saying that they are basically the anointed of God. And as we have pictured here, Pope Francis always thought it was kind of a cool picture I took of him myself there uh, just a couple of weeks ago. It looks like he's biting his fingernails, you know, like he's nervous. Well, a good reason to be nervous because he's definitely living on uh, at the end of days here. And Satan knows he has but just a little time, the Bible says. But it's kind of interesting how that preludes the wars and rumors of wars. And, uh, of course, uh, bringing one other uh, passage here into your attention in the Lost Gospels, same uh, part, Matthew 24, uh, he says again, for you shall hear of great wars and also much talk of war. And I just thought it was interesting, especially in the latter part there, he says, because before the great rest, those that have power shall gather to themselves and agree the lands and the riches of the earth for their own lust. And that just kind of goes hand in hand with the wars and the rumors of wars that Yeshua speaks of in Matthew 24. They're trying to gather lands, masses of lands for themselves. And it's exactly the Pope of Rome has his Roman soldiers busy doing just that, gathering up the lands for himself. Now, there's two reasons that this could be, as we see in the scripture. It's not just the lands, but also the lands and the riches of the earth. What is the riches of the earth? Of course, the natural uh, resources of the earth, just like we shared with you just the other day with uh, President Lungu visiting uh, uh, Pope Francis and as well going on to Paris, France there, treated like a celebrity with Pope Francis. Why? The new discovery of high-grade diamonds that were just discovered in his country and how they're trying to get everything right in with the government there so investors can come in. Well, I guess they're entertaining those investors. And also, of course, the mining companies have been visiting the Vatican as well and said you must have a stop at the Vatican if you expect to do anything. Isn't that interesting? How does the Vatican seem to control just about everything there is on planet Earth? But if, don't forget, though, as the Scripture says, that there should be those that would deceive many. See, there would be many that would come uh, in my name. And, of course, that many is there's been many popes coming in the name, uh, claiming to be in the name of Christ. But, of course, they're doing nothing but deceiving the masses. So we move on here. And the reason why I wanted to bring this out is because of the different uh, issues that are going on in the news as of right now. NATO and the European leaders are wh uh, whip up hysteria over the myth of nuclear threat from Russia. That's what Sergei Lavrov is saying. Now, I think he, he brings out a good argument if you take in light of what the scripture says, where Jesus says there would be wars and rumors of wars. The nuclear annihilation, is this only a rumor or is it really going to be a war? Well, you know, a lot of people, it's always been like a rumor. There's always been a threat that there would be a nuclear annihilation. But Yeshua clearly says to us, be not troubled about this. Another place it says, it's the beginning of sorrows. I believe a verse or two after that. Uh, but anyway, as we move on in here, Sergei says here, uh, the 28-member transatlantic military bloc, along with a number of European countries, is uh, intentionally hyping up the myth, quote-unquote, that Russia allegedly possesses a so-called threat to Sweden and the Baltic states, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov actually said. And this was reported on uh, RT News here, February the 9th, uh, actually today, on 20, uh, 2016. He goes on to say, the leaders of NATO member states and a number of the European countries, especially Britain, the Nordic countries, and the Baltic countries neighboring us, Poland, 
Romania and some others are whipping up Russia's threat myth as well as the idea that we are planning to use a nuclear weapons to intimidate Sweden and the Baltic countries, Sergei Lavrov said in an interview with the uh, Moshkovsky uh, Kamos Molets daily newspaper there. But of course, as Sergei Lavrov has, has put it, this is not the case. It's, it's, you, you, we see a lot of this even in Vladimir Putin, uh, the president of Russia. He said this quite often. It would be a crazy man that would be willing to take on NATO. But the other side of the coin is, though, too, we see that NATO is pushing Russia uh, into a corner, as, as it might, you might say, that uh, who knows what's going to happen. Uh, continuing on to the same article right here, it says uh, the British Army is uh, to deploy I'm sorry, a different article here, but it is on RT News. War games in the Middle East could prepare UK for potential Russian war with NATO. Another uh, RT article that came up here. Uh, this was on February the 8th, the day before yesterday. It says the British Army is deploying 1,600 troops in Jordan to take part in war games, which could be uh, preparation for a potential confrontation between Russia and NATO member countries in Eastern Europe. The Daily Telegraph has reported citing sources. Army sources told the paper that the exercise, which will uh, simulate an Iraq invasion for the first time in over a decade, is not a prelude to sending ground troops to fight Islamic State, uh, ISIS. Rather, exercise Shami Storm could be seen as practice routine to fight off a, a potential Russian invasion of Ukraine or Eastern Europe. Now, I personally think it's kind of absurd that they would think that this is uh, to, to simulate a, a battle that would be happening in Ukraine when they're doing the exercise in the Middle East. NATO has never been afraid to go out there and do the exercises in the Middle East, even in Poland, uh, Latvia, and all the countries there that are bordering the Soviet Union. They have no problem with doing the exercises there. Why are they doing it in Jordan? They mention in here a, an invasion from Iran. They are planning on doing, uh, uh, whether it be war games or an actual real battle with Russia, they're expecting to do something in the very near future right in the Middle East. And we already know that uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, the United Arab Emirates, as well as Bahrain, and even Turkey are all speaking about doing a, a ground invasion into Syria. Now, it's kind of interesting. We see that also the United States has, has mentioned about bringing in 10,000 soldiers of their own into Iraq. There's already plenty of military bases in the area, Afghanistan, uh, Iraq, uh, Turkey as well. Uh, the U.S. also set up a built military base in Syria, not too far from Russia. Of course, not at the uh, uh, invitation of President Bashar al-Assad, but nonetheless, they've done it anyway. So it's a serious, serious war situation that is going on there in the Middle East in preparations for war. Now, continuing on into this article here, uh, as far as the war games in the Middle East, it says here, this isn't a counter-ISIL exercise. If anything, this is much more about us being prepared to join the U.S. in Ukraine than it is in Syria, a source said, as cited by the T Daily Telegraph, adding this is not the sort of kind of force you expect to roll into Aleppo to take on a bunch of jihadists. Of course not. 1,600 troops is not a lot of troops, but nonetheless, if one is trying to prepare the way for a larger contingent of soldiers to come in, 1,600 troops is a pretty good uh, number to get started to set up an air base or whatever else the case may be that uh, the British may need in that regard. However, it says in the article here, the British Ministry of Defense has dismissed claims made by the media that the upcoming drills are connected with preparations to go to war with Russia. It is not an exercise about war with Russia, a defense ministry spokesman told R.A. Navosi on Monday. The drills are an annual event tested, testing the Army's capability to deploy and support an armored force of up to 30,000 troops anywhere in the world. He said London is not preparing to go to war with Russia, he concluded. Now, I would have to agree to some uh, point in the article here. I don't think Britain really is interested in going to war with Russia, but nonetheless, Britain is a NATO member. And if Turkey ends up getting into a confrontation with Russia, then NATO members are going to be obligated to, to back up Turkey. And we've seen the United States clearly willing to back up Turkey at pretty much any cost whatsoever. So it's 
becoming a very serious situation, friends, and war is definitely right around the corner. Uh, as the scripture says, and we'll back up to this just real quickly for you again, uh, we see what Yeshua says himself, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And we have definitely have been, been seeing for, for the last 2,000 years nearly, all are not 2,000, but about 1,700 years, the different popes that have raised up down through the centuries, uh, but especially more so in the modern days that we have seen pope after pope after pope. It has been a constant deception. The people, the churches have united back with the Church of Rome, the mother whore of Revelation, and all these churches are coming back to their mother uh, right into... <laughs> Well, we'll go into that a little bit later in another broadcast here. We're also seeing as well the scripture, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Now, the next verse that I don't have on here, verse 7, speaks about nation rising against nation and kingdom rising against kingdom. This is exactly where we are at in this prophecy of Matthew 24. It is nation against nation. It is the United States and Russia, nation against nation. It is... Uh, we are definitely seeing on the very verge of this, we are seeing the uh, kingdom against kingdom, and that is the uh, Arabic kingdoms uh, ready to war with one another. Uh, we are seeing the, the Saudis against the Syrians, the Turkish against the Syrians. Uh, it is a very serious situation that we're looking at right now, to say the very least. The, the Iranians also uh, being the, the forces that are siding with Bashar al-Assad that are against the Saudis. So we are seeing the kingdom rising against kingdom and nation against nation. It's only a matter of time before all of this spirals completely out of control. Scripture being fulfilled. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. By the way, if you would like to contribute to this news, prophetic news broadcast, we do need your help, especially in this time while we are trying to gather more information and more evidence for you while we're out on the road. I'm Stephen Banu. Thank you. So you can go to IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com. Thank you for your support. God bless you.